that's a trout guys that's a trout hello makeshifters today we're making an articulated streamer with shiny tail and rubber legs i already know the outcome of this video i ended up catching a personal best brown trout which i was pretty happy about and brown trout is one of the most versatile trout if you take it and put it into a sea it becomes a sea trout or if it's born in a small creek it doesn't grow very big, it adapts very well. And the most mysterious of the brown trout, it would be ferox. And there is two opinions about ferox trout. One opinion is that any trout can become a ferox once they discover that they can feed on a rich protein diet which consists of fish and then the growth explodes. And then another opinion, that the ferox trout is genetically different trout to the rest of them. And no ordinary trout can become a ferox trout, as ferox would have different genetics. And if it was born a ferox trout, it will grow big like a ferox. And if it wasn't, then it won't make it to that size. And I believe in the second opinion, that the ferox trout is genetically different to any other type of trout and it is rare therefore it's quite valuable so let's make it and take it out fishing hook have a device it's gamakatsu f31 in size one knot first we're gonna need the tail let's make it this is a chamois leather guys i bought it in a in a garage that sells different stuff for cleaning cars and fixing cars I have already cut a smaller piece. I want the tail to be one centimeter wide. Now we need to cut it on the sides, leaving just a string tip in the middle. That's what we're going to tie it in by. Let me mark the center first. And now with the smaller scissors, we are going to cut this, these bits away. This is the hook that we are going to tie it on. That is roughly 4.3 centimeters. So for good measure, I want that tail to be, to be 5 centimeters long. The tail is almost done, you just have to smooth the corners. Now to add a little bit of co color, I'm just going to use green marker. On one side I'm going to make the stripes, and then on the other side we're going to make dots. Here we go. Now we just have to wait for it to dry and then we'll be ready to tie it on the hook. We are going to use red thread in 6 odd. We're going to take 10 turns and then we're going to skip a turn and then continue. And what that's going to give us, it's going to give us an, an empty spot and I know not to lay the materials past that spot because we need this room for the head of the fly. This is a bit of sparkle yarn that I bought online real cheap. It is very similar to Fritz Chenille.
This is a silicone buzz skirt for a jig. It has nice legs. We're going to use it. I got eight strands of rubber legs here. Here underneath I'm going to I'm going to position it so they're all equal distance apart. Then I'm going to pull them back and then secure them with the thread. Now we just need to cut them to size. Halfway up the tail. Here we go. Double wood finish. We are going to need three coats of varnish, guys. Here we go, that's the first coat. Two more to go. It's time to tie on the front hook. I still have same kind of hook and device, Gamakatsu F314 in size 2 odd. And for attaching the back hook, we are going to use sewing thread. And now with open wraps, we are going to bring the thread to the hook eye. And then bring the thread back. And what that's going to give us... Can you hear it? It's going to give us little ridges on the hook shank. And it really really going to bite into the material when we tie down the back hook. To tie down our back hook, I'm going to use this titanium leader material. It's about 0.35-0.4 mil in diameter. On the packet it says 40 pounds. I have the leader material right here. It's an eye of the hook. And then we're going to make a knot. So now we'll get our two pliers on each end. You can probably see it better this way. Yeah, about there. And then we're going to grab it, put one of the tag ends through the eye of the hook. So now the hook is inside the loop. And then we'll take this tag end and put it through the loop. Now this tag end is longer, so we'll take the we'll take the longer tag end. Let's put the beads on it. and then put the two tag ends through the eye of the hook. Now we're going to bend it back. Bend it back and then tie it down. And now we'll go into the wood finish. And the reason why I like the titanium reading material, guys, to use in the articulated fly, because this material doesn't have a memory, so it doesn't kink. It doesn't matter how many fish I catch on it, whichever way the fish will pull on it, it, it doesn't matter, it will always stay straight. Switch the thread, it's, it's going to be a red one in 6 odd. And we are going to use this dumbbell eye. I'm not sure how far to position the eye on the hook. I will say 
two eye lengths. So that's six mil and six mil. So that's how far I want the eye. And then we're going to come in underneath. That is sparkle yarn I bought online. It has a little bit longer fibers than the than the yarn I put at the back. And it is very similar to the polar chenille. Let's tie it off. Here I have 10 legs, five blue and five black. And now we'll do a whip finish just in case. Okay, guys, this is when the fun part comes in. We will make a dubbing loop. Now we're going to get our dubbing twister, the one that we made. Take a few turns. With the black marker, we'll color the thread. Our black mark is left there, and that's how we know how far to stack the to stack the dubbing loop. I got this bright orange yarn for the head. I have cut a length of it. That's two centimeters, and I'm just going to take it apart. And that's what I'm going to stack, stack the dubbing loop with. I got a little piece of wax here, guys. I'm just going to wax the thread. And now I'm going to stack the, stack the dubbing loop with, with yarn. Okay, guys, dubbing loop is stacked. Now we just have to twist it. Now we get to wrap it. Then one on the eyes. Another one on the eyes. And then we can tie it off, guys. And then fold it back and tie over it. Whip finish from here, guys. I will position the scissors on, on the eye of the hook and then just cut it. Here we go, guys. That's the finished head. 
and the finished fly. Let's put on a few coats of varnish. Here we go guys, that's the that's the first coat. Two more to go. Lures are ready. Let's check size and weight. Together with the tail, it is 12 centimeters. It is weighing 5.9 grams. Let's put them in the box and take them out fishing. Hello guys, we are out on the water again. We are going to try our articulated shami, shami tail streamer and see what we can do. Okay, let me see the movement. Whoa! I like it already guys. Look at that. Trout, guys, that's a trout. I can't believe this. Oh, 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 oh. You're up the line, You're up the line. Whoa, this is something unbelievable, guys. Look at that. No, I can't. No, this is cannot be, guys. This is my this is my biggest trout. <laughs> that is my biggest trout, guys, ever. What a trout, guys! Wow! Look at this, guys. Look at that! <laughs> that is my biggest trail. That's my PB, guys. I can't believe it. Fifty-eight centimeters. Fifty-eight, guys. That is something unbelievable. Now guys, fish like that, after giving me such an emotion, have to leave, that's for sure.
58 centimeters guys I cannot believe this look at that bad boy look at him <laughs> look at that one last time look at this guys 58 centimeters that's awesome I'm over the moon it couldn't be better look at that guys <laughs> look at him go yes <laughs> Oh, I just can't believe this. I thought it was a pike. Oh, when he started rolling, he wrapped up onto the line and the drag wasn't giving. So the rod tip was getting very close to him. I just had to... I just, just had to give him line. This is unbelievable, guys. This is so unbelievable. This is makeshift lures, and I approve this streamer. <laughs> it's a full on articulated pike fly with a full on 30 centimeter leader. <laughs> it's a tin wire, but it's still a wire leader that technically meant to scare the trout away, but he just didn't care. And he came back twice for it as well. So guys, what I was doing, I was casting. Uh, and then I was just retrieving pull, pause, two pulls. One pull, pause, two pulls. And that's what I was doing. And he bite just, just before the bike, he bite. He bite it. I missed him. So then I cast it. And what I was doing then, just turning the reel slowly and twitching the twitching the rod tip like so very slowly because I knew on my second cast it can't be same retrieve because then he'll get suspicious it have to be different retrieve and sure enough he followed it in and bite it oh it's awesome guys absolutely awesome <laughs> Finally guys, there is a small one. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> one trout, one pike. Here we go. Let, let me see if I can release him in the water. There he goes. Come on. <laughs> there he is. Oh, very nice. Okay, guys, recording with the phone as my camera died. It just wouldn't turn on. Maybe it got too humid and just timed out. What a day, guys. I caught my personal bass trout, 58 centimeters. And I'm suspecting it's not just an ordinary trout. It, it might be a ferox, which is unheard of in my books in this lake and I catch another small pike then thereafter so guys it was a short day but it was an awesome awesome day can't complain about anything brand new streamer and a 58 centimeter trout it's just awesome guys so I'm gonna go home I'm gonna take some rest and think for a new lure for our box